Hey guys, it's Victoria with Nutrition by Victoria, and in this video I'm going to talk about protein. And one thing I want to mention before I get started on this video is that I did do a pretty detailed blog post about this topic. So if you would like more information, you can check out my blog post. I'll leave the link for that down below in the description. It is up on my website and it goes into more detail uh, about protein and some of the things that I'm going to discuss. What is protein? Protein is um, a group name for amino acids, which are simply nitrogen containing compounds. We require um, roughly 2.5 to 10% protein in our diet as adults. Breast milk only contains 6% protein, so I think that's interesting because you're doing the most growth and developing when you're an infant as a human, and human breast milk is sufficient enough for an infant, so it just gives us an idea of how much protein we actually need. We actually recycle about 70 to 100 grams of endogenous protein on a daily basis and that uh, endogenous means internal and that's coming from uh, desquaminated mucosal cells, glycoproteins, digestive enzymes, etc. But we're able to use those proteins to fill our protein requirements. So our dietary needs for protein are pretty minimal. And what's ironic about that is that most people actually consume too much protein. The average American consumes about double to uh, three times the amount of protein that is actually necessary in the human diet. Now don't get me wrong, amino acids are essential. There's nine of them that are essential compared to the 22 that is found in nature. And meaning that we have to take them in through our diet in order to um, supply our essential amino acid needs within our body. And then pretty much through those amino acids, we create all the protein structures that we need to within our system. And as adults, because we've already done the majority of our growing, we're mo mainly using them for uh, repair work. So again, our needs aren't very large compared to our overall energy needs, which are tremendous. And we don't use, we can use protein for fuel generation, but it's not preferred. We like to use protein for, uh, you know, building blocks within our, our body, uh, reconstructing our uh, damaged tissues and things like that, not for producing energy. That's the carbohydrates job. Uh, how much protein do we need to be consuming every day? The World Health Organization suggests uh, 2.5 to 10 percent of our total daily calorie intake and uh, the RDA for protein is uh, 46 grams per day for women and 56 grams per day for men and you're able to meet your protein uh, requirements and actually you can dip as low as 30 grams per day and you're still going to be fine. So our protein needs are not as big of a deal as people think that they are. There's so much emphasis on protein, protein, protein in the media, through uh, nutritional corporations, through even just some mainstream dieting uh, authorities, etc. But the truth is that you really don't need a whole lot. And as long as you're following a calorie sufficient diet, you're gonna meet your protein requirements. So let's get into where protein comes from. We have two, um, you know, different kinds of protein. We have animal-based protein and we have plant-based proteins. So first I'm going to talk about animal-based protein and the fact that we shouldn't even really be consuming it because um, we don't need to be taking in the cooked flesh or byproducts of another creature in order to fulfill our own protein requirements aka we don't need to eat someone else's muscle in order to build muscle on our body in fact muscle growth actually has more to do with just eating enough calories and doing sufficient training and staying hydrated than consuming you know excess of amounts of protein in fact consuming excess amounts of animal products in general uh, you're going to get too much fat and protein in your diet and you're opening the doors for all kinds of chronic diseases related to excess protein and fat consumption like 
heart disease, uh, renal problems, liver disease, uh, obesity, cancer, diabetes, gout, arthritis, and the list goes on from there. It's really detrimental to your health to consume especially animal protein in excess. There's other things that come with animal protein consumption that aren't good, like IGF factor one, which promotes tumor growths in the body, heterocyclic amines, nitrogenous amines, and all kinds of other toxic compounds that if we're not taking in enough nutrient-dense plant foods and calories on a daily basis, um, and we're consuming excess protein, we're not gonna be able to excrete it from our body, and we're gonna do a lot of harm to our organs, especially our heart, kidney, liver, um, in order to excrete that stuff. So best option is to just keep the protein low and uh, avoid animal product consumption. Let's talk about plant-based protein. So in plant-based protein, we have what I call unconcentrated and concentrated sources of protein. You can meet all of your amino acid and protein requirements by following uh, a diet that's just based in fruits and vegetables and maybe grains as well. So this means that you don't even, these foods are all unconcentrated sources of protein, meaning that they're very low in protein, but if you eat enough of them, you fulfill your protein requirements. Concentrated sources of plant-based protein include beans and legumes, nuts and seeds, peas. Um, other examples include like hemp seeds, uh, rice protein, um, and quinoa is pretty high in protein. So you can, you know, if you want to have more protein in your diet, you can get it from plant foods and you're still not gonna be causing as much harm to your system as you would consuming animal products. I always suggest people get all their uh, amino acid needs from the unconcentrated foods, the fruits, the vegetables, and the grains like rice. Uh, because uh, you're not putting as much of a digestive burden on your system, uh, which enhances nutrient absorption, assimilation, and utilization in the body. And when you consume amino acids in their raw state, so you're consuming them from raw fruits and vegetables, you're getting them in the form that's most uh, ideal for the body because when you amino acids are cooked their structure is somewhat delicate so they break apart and they denature this happens when you cook animal products this happens when you cook plant foods too so in order to meet protein needs it's really ideal to be consuming enough fruits and vegetables in a calorie sufficient diet um, to make sure you're actually consuming the amino acids that you can utilize within your body. In general, I recommend that people consume a, minim, or a maximum of 20% calories from protein in a plant-based diet, and that's a maximum. So if Joe the bodybuilder is you know, really looking to uh, promote excess weight and fluid retention on his body, he can eat a higher amount of protein in his diet, but for somebody who's looking to be fairly lean, uh, you'll want to keep your protein to a minimum of about 5 to 10 percent. You can base that according to what feels best for you, but in general, uh, you'll want to keep your protein uh, intake below 20 percent of your total daily calorie needs. So. That's it for this video. If you'd like more detailed information about protein, check out the blog post that I linked um, in the description. Please give this video a like if you found it interesting, helpful, informative. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day. Bye.